dynamics have changed a bit in 1991. The run and gun explorers set a host of school records New Year's Eve at Loyola Marymount as its backcourt troika hit for 120 points. Senior Doug Overton has assumed complete command. His stock is on the rise. The Temple Owls defeated Pennsylvania two nights ago despite a lifeless first half. Senior Mark Macon owned the second stanza, carrying the Owls to victory. Tonight, the National All-American meets the product of the Philadelphia Playground one final time next. Prism Sports proudly presents Philadelphia Big Five City Series Basketball. Tonight, live from the Philadelphia Civic Center, the LaSalle Explorers beat the Temple Owls. For the first time since 1955, the Temple Owls beat the LaSalle Explorers here at the Philadelphia Civic Center. Good evening, everybody. I'm Larry Rosen with Ed Stefanski. LaSalle tonight in search of its 1,000th win. And for both teams, a share of the Big Five City Series title is on the line again tonight. LaSalle, of course, led by the backcourt, Randy Woods and Doug Overton. If there's a better twosome in the country, I don't know who they are. And certainly nobody else doing as much for their squad. Well, they complement each other so well. Overton scoring almost at 30 points a game. Then Woods comes in with 21. They score more than half of the LaSalle production offensively. But also defensively, they create high on the defensive end, and they'll be all over Mark Macon and Vic Carstarthen for Temple this evening. Now, Mark Macon bailed his club out a couple of nights ago against Pennsylvania with 21 points in the second half. He's got to shoulder the load again. Well, the offense has got to go to Mark Macon. Now, if LaSalle pressures full court and Macon can catch the basketball in the middle, he can create problems for LaSalle. So let's see if they pressure, can Macon get the ball and do something with it inside. Meantime, on the inside, Donald Hodge and Mark Strickland have a serious height advantage for the Temple Owls. We've called Mark Strickland the X Factor tonight. When he plays well, when he rebounds well, Temple's usually in good shape. Well, Mark Strickland leads the Temple Owls in rebounds and he does an excellent job on the offensive glass. He must get the ball and put it back. The other night we had him against the University of Pennsylvania. He got the basketball but couldn't put it back in the hole. He's got to make those easy shots for Temple to succeed tonight. A share of the City Series titles on the line has the makings of a classic. Happy you're with us. We'll come back with the starting lineups in just a moment. Big Five City Series Basketball on Prism is brought to you by RCA Color Track 2000, Home Theater TV. RCA, changing entertainment again. Step, push, step, step, strong arm. Before they can become what they want to be. What I want to know is details about yourself. They have to learn who they really are. They shaved my legs, put a pair of nylon stockings on me, and I was in show business. How about sex? Can I sit on your lap? <laughs> oh, sex! Cassie, why did you leave me? First time we made love, it was a great big deal. It was the only way that I could make you want me again. I close my eyes. Surprise! When they stand in the spotlight, you can look right into their hearts. You know, I actually found the glass slipper once, and it fit, but then it broke. A chorus line. One singular sensation. The anticipation is over. It's time to go to war for Temple and LaSalle. Let's go to John McAdams for tonight's starting lineup. Welcome to the Philadelphia Civic Center, home of the LaSalle University Explorers. This evening, LaSalle University presents a Philadelphia Big Five City Series game featuring the Temple University Owls and the LaSalle University Explorers. Let's meet the starting lineups. First, for the Temple University Owls. At a forward position, the junior, six feet, eight inches tall, from Philadelphia, number 24, Mick Kilgore. At the other forward, the junior, six feet, nine inches tall, from Atlanta, Georgia, number 30, Mark Strickland. At the center spot, a junior, seven feet tall, from Washington, D.C., number 35, Donald Hodge. 
At the guards, a sophomore, six feet tall, from Camden, New Jersey, number three, Vic Karstarfin. And the other guard, a senior, six feet, five inches tall, from Saginaw, Michigan, number 12, Mark Macon. The head coach of the Temple University Owls in his ninth season is John Cheney. The assistant coaches Jim Maloney, Dean DeMobilis, and Nate Blackwell. And for the LaSalle University Explorers. And a forward position is senior, six feet, six inches tall, from Fort Worth, Texas, number 20, Broderick President. At the other forward, a junior, six feet, six inches tall, from Lewis, Pennsylvania, number 25, Jack Hurd. At the center spot, a junior, six feet, nine inches tall, from Amsterdam, the Netherlands, number 44, Will Holy Verse. At the guards, a senior, six feet, three inches tall, from Philadelphia, number 11, Doug Overton. At the other guard, a junior, six feet tall, from Philadelphia, number 14, Randy Woods. The head coach at the LaSalle University Explorers in his fifth season is Bill Speedy Morris. The assistants, Joe Mahalik, Randy Monroe, Rich Prendergast, and Sam Ryan Sr. The officials for this evening's game with the ball is John Letcher, along with Art McDonald and Dick Slumkowski. Well, if you like good, hard-nosed, well-disciplined basketball, you're in for a treat for the next couple of hours. Glad you're with us for Temple LaSalle. I'm Larry Rose with Ed Stefanski. Again, the last time these two teams met back in 1955 before the Big Five was formed. And here they are once more. They played in a doubleheader together about 10 years ago. Not against each other. Temple played here in 1980. Eddie perimeter games likely to be the keys if you just look at it at face value. Well, Temple would like to slow it down in a half-court set. And the other thing, LaSalle will try full-court pressure, try to get in the running game. I believe it'll be a half-court set. I think Temple will break the press, but set up and try to get the ball into Donald Hodge. I think they should go to Hodge early in the game, establish it, see if they can get Levers or Brian Holland in foul trouble. You gotta go inside early. Do you expect either team to come out pressing? Oh, definitely LaSalle will press 90 feet in order to see if Temple can run. Temple, though, they'll break the press and then bring it back. I'd like to see him, if they get it to Macon's hands in the middle, he can just blow by people and create a lot of problems for him. Bottom of your screen left, Victor Karstarfin out of Camden, New Jersey, starting. He missed the shoot-around Thursday morning. Coach Cheney said he jinxed his team. When Victor didn't start, Michael Harden did. You want to talk about jinxes, a black cat showed up at Temple's practice yesterday. So the omens are there, the significance, the athletes, it's all here. We're ready to go with basketball. That's Karstarfin pumping left hand across the timeline. Looking at a man-to-man -man defense with Doug Overton on Mark Macon. The Owls will go to their man set. Kilgore left wing. Hodge will post up. So they can post Macon inside also. There's Mark with Victor. The woods car the matchup, a big one as well. Hodge one-on-one -on -one with Levers. Turns, faces, misses the layup. And it's still a basketball. That was perfect. That's exactly what they have to do. But he has his hands on his head. Donald, how did you miss that? He's saying, what am I doing in there? Wide open. Donald Hodge has got to just go up. He can dunk it on this spot. Turn, face. He should go up and jam it. Fresh 45. Karstarfin starts it. 30 feet away. Jack Hurd, Nick Kilgore. Low post. Making faces. Around Levers with a hook. Rims out. Strickland to keep alive. President to keep alive. And Mark Macon winds up with the basketball. Two good possessions for Temple, though. Two excellent shots. Not a good shot there by Mark, as he never got himself square. Didn't get his legs beneath him. And we're still scoreless. One minute in. It's LaSalle's first possession. Looking over Temple's matchup. Look where the Temple players are in the perimeter, and Wood still fires from downtown. And it goes up and over. Not going to see Randy short on too many shots, no matter where he's taking them from. The Temple perimeter players, Macon and Kerstarthen, have to be aware where LaSalle guards are. Push that defense out because they'll fire from way downtown. LaSalle looking for the 1,000th victory in the school's history. Temple well over 1,300. Good man-to-man -man pressure by Hurd. Kilgore in the corner. Has an entry to Strickland. Fading, firing, no. Hodge may have cleared out. And he did. Donald can't believe it. First team foul. Watch the right arm. Right here, Strickland. Mark Strickland doesn't face. He's shooting as he's turning around. You have to face the basket first. Here, not much of a foul, but they got Donald Hodge pushing the smaller Doug Overton. Little ticky tack. Extended 3-2 defense now. As Eddie said, look how they come out on the perimeter shooters. 
no one in the post as Milko Levers, the five man, is all the way out by half court. Temple has to do this if they're going to play a zone. They've got to bring it out, let the ball go inside, see if Milko Levers or Broderick President can hurt him. Karstarfen follows over and all the way out. Heard for three. Way short. President knocks it out, and Karstarfen run around over to two on three. He'll pull up. Got it. That's a nice pickup of the basketball by Vic Karstarfen because Randy Woods, who's also very quick, went for the ball. Nice pickup on the dribble. He is the best three-point shooter on Temple squad at 41%. Good penetration, off the glass, no. Floorboard belongs to Karstarfen. Will the Owls run? Zycourt break making, takes it to the foul line, back to Karstarfen, three! Good two-man game there, and Mark Macon made the penetration, had the sound collapse on him, saw his teammate, his buddy, Vic Karstarfen, coming down. Karstarfen squared off and knocked another three down. Karstarfen, a native of Camden, transferred from Cincinnati. Overton, Woods for three, and Randy Woods has it. That is so far out, but Mick Kilgore has been told, I'm sure, all week, you have to get out. Randy Woods is going to shoot the ball, and I'm sure John James is right now. now. He's right in front of the coaches, Mick, with an earful. Posted strictly. Back out, Karstarfin. Drives coaches crazy all week. You're telling them how you have the game plan. Jim Maloney, Dean Monopolis, the assistants tell them they're where they're going to shoot the ball, and then the game starts, and the kid's not out on the player. Kilgore will go left on Hurd. Gets himself together. The man's in the air. The foul's on Jack Hurd. Good job, Mick Kilgore. Of course, Mick Kilgore played high school ball against uh, Doug Overton when Doug was at uh, Dobbins. Randy Woods and, and Mick are from the same year. They play Sunny Hill basketball all summer together, so a lot of familiarity in the guards. What's nice though, in that possession by Mick Kilgore, he just got uh, discussed a couple things by John Chaney. Told him a few things. He came right back and had a nice move offensively to pick up Hurd's foul. What do you think of this place for Big Five basketball? Well, I'm a traditionalist. I love the Pulitzer for all of them, but I'm just happy they're playing each other. <laughs> Let's continue to do that. They did a nice job on the Civic Center here, or the old convention hall. I mean, it's well lit, very bright, and they've done a real nice job. Real good acoustics, too, when the ball goes through the net. You do not miss it. 8-3, Temple on top. High post levers. Strickland follows him out. Woods is in the corner with a three. No, Roderick President, tough board, puts it on the floor though, gets himself square and knocks it down. So Roderick almost got himself in trouble, and we've got a foul off the ball. Mick Kilgore pushing. So that's going to be a fresh possession for the Sal. Going to call that, I think, an intentional foul. Randy Woods will get two shots, so here's a three-point play, two shots, and the basketball. Not using his head right there, Mick Kilgore. Mark Macon just told him, come on, calm down. You just can't get the emotions running. Mark Macon points over. The captain, the leader, gets his whole team around him, and he's going to talk to him that we can't lose our cool right here. Sorry, it was Doug Overton that was fouled. He's on the line, not Randy Woods. Hangs it shy. Dougie in 87 percent at the line. There's the familiar glare of John Chaney. So that's four points on the possession and the basketball. Yeah, not a smart move. Mick Kilgore, as you talked about, he knows everybody here and he's, it's, he's pumped up for this game, but you gotta calm down and play the game. How about Dougie? Off the out of bounds from NBA range. And LaSalle's got its first lead. So you normally wouldn't cover people that far out. You're taught to, let's pack it in a little bit, let's go out. But that's really far shoot the basketball, but they're going to do it. They did it against Villanova. Double team in the corner, double dribble, Karstarfin. His first turnover, his first in a couple of basketball games. Vic Karstarfin has done a pretty good job for Temple controlling well his basketball. Just got caught there. Yeah, he picked the basketball up. The referee right on top of a good call. So we've got our first break in the action, and we're going to stay live with you. You know, John Chaney doing his dance. Both these teams have spent time in Japan. The Temple Owls went to Japan in August. LaSalle just a couple of weeks ago. And for Temple, it was a preseason trip, so the games didn't count. A little bit more of a, of a cultural setting, if you will, for Mark Macon. There's Jan Post. And John Chaney given the peace sign. Chaney gets a chance to dip his toes in the lovely Pacific Ocean. Pretty sights for John and for Mark Macon. Their games, of course, were all on the exhibition tour back 
in August. Meantime, the LaSalle Explorers played games that counted for real in their season against Baylor and against Idaho. There's Milko Levers leading the squad out. Speedy got serious when the lead went down from 19 to 5 against Baylor. Yeah, they were serious, but still some time to show a, a Japanese rugby team the way to do American football. Watch this ball. It's going to hit off the light standard and then find Jack Hurd. Touchdown, Explorers. So, yeah, they had time to have a good time as well. Speedy accepting the Coach of the Year, Coach of the Tournament Award as they went undefeated on their Japanese trip. You didn't get to go to Japan back with Pennsylvania. Well, no, I, you didn't have that kind of travel budget. But I just like that pass. The Eagles could have used a couple breaks like that this afternoon. So we played four minutes, three seconds. There's Lisa, the Temple Owl. Goes out with the, the one-point lead. And it's what we thought it might be, an awful lot of perimeter work. See, John Cheney's explaining what happened. A little elbow by Doug Overton. Nick Kilgore came back with the obvious foul, and it's always the second guy who normally gets caught. <laughs> Got to keep your cool. Got to keep your head in this game. Again, they match up way outside. Broderick President Mark Macon trying to strip him there. Dougie's got a 19-footer. Short. Look at him crash the boards, but four hands of LaSalle that have belonged to the Temple Owls. So as expected, LaSalle playing the man-to-man. -man. Randy Woods, dog and car starfin. Kilgore has a post at Hodge. He wants the ball. Drop step to the lane. Faces and misses the three-footer. Gets it back. From 14 feet away, ripples. That was beautiful by Donald Hodge early. He's making real good drop steps, real strong on Milko Levers. I would keep going to Donald Hodge inside. And if they collapse on him, you got to hit Vic Carstarthur and make him for jumpers. Again, the Temple defense is extended, although Broderick President won't hurt you out there. Weak pass by Woods. Overton's going to turn it to a three around and out. Hodge screams on the board. And here comes Macon, side court right, with his chin high. As a posted strict, it'll give it to him on President. Now he faces and fires short. As he never really got square, three on two. Overton, around Macon on the floor. Heard, he's unconscious. Misses Randy Woods, taking it to the seven footer, leaves it for Levers. And Milko's gone the line. And that's two fouls on Donald Hodge. That's a big foul early in the contest. 14-34 left in the first half, and a big foul here as Overton gets tripped. There's no call, but you'll see the shot, the miss. Woods picks it up. Woods has the presence of a smaller man to catch Milker Levers. Levers shows the ball. Hodge leaves his feet. Cardinal sin, there's your foul. And he is on the bench at the 14-34 mark with his head in his hands. And it's James Spears, the freshman from Glen Mills, number 34. There's James. Maybe the best rebounder on the squad. Look at the football body on oh, that Oh, he's team. got a great body, but it changes the whole complex of the game because Spears is obviously not the offensive threat that Hodge is inside. So LaSalle can do a lot of things at the guards. Watch Randy Woods take a lot of chances now. There's the upset Donald Hodge talking to the big guy, Coach Dean Demopoulos, with tears in his eyes is Donald. And you know he's going to sit the rest of the half. And they say the Temple players aren't emotional. Donald Hodge crying on the bench right now. See how Woods is going to leave his man now. He's going to go all over the court if he has the opportunity. That's a bad shot. And the foul will go the other way. John Cheney wanted the foul on the shot as Mick Kilgore double clutched and then kind of threw it up. See, they just have to run their set. Mick Kilgore is off balance as he's leaning. You see the inside, he got the elbow. The referees are going to call it real tight right now. It looks that way. So that's Mark Strickland's foul. Team foul four. 14 minutes just about. As Doug Overton pumps a three short. Karstarfin's got Macon streaking. Looks for him, but the passing lane is cut off. So Victor's third three is off target. Strickland bails him out and jams it down. Mark Strickland obviously bailed him out. I don't know what Vic Karstarfin's thinking. LaSalle did a good job getting back on transition basketball there. He takes a real quick shot. I think they got to run their offensive set a little bit longer than that. High post levers. Running the baseline, Jack Hurd. Spears cuts him off. Bad entry pass in the hands of James Spears, who arrests the basketball to Mark Macon. Turnover number one on the south. Macon with the left. 
And Arnie McDonald says the foul will come before substitutions, wholesale substitutions. President, Levers, and Hurd will sit down, replaced by Neubauer, Shelton, and Holland. Spears pops off the stack. Karstarf is back at half court. Now there's the low post entry, Spears faces and fires. That's a good sign for Temple because James Spears comes right off the bench and gets a nice two points, nice real touch over the LaSalle defender. There's even been some talk of Spears starting because of that rebounding ability, but he certainly passed Chris Lovelace in terms of the first big guy off the bench. Woods from NBA length, short this time, unusual. Floorboard three on one, Macon's got a jam, hammer time. Talk about it before, defense creates offense in the Temple matchup zone. They're going through with people. The last time Macon took man-to-man -to -man on Overton, doing a real good job in this matchup right now are the Temple Owls. That's Mark's first bucket. The lead is at six. We played six and a half minutes. From the Civic Center for a share of the Big Five City Series title, it's Larry Rosen and Ed Stefanski. Glad you're with us this Saturday night live on Prism. Three guard set as always. New bow. We've got a foul off the ball. Again, it's on Strickland, bodying with Shelton. And John Chaney stamps his feet. I think they got Macon on that one. Oh, yeah, he pushed okay. Randy Woods into the screen. But Temple much more aggressive tonight than they were the other night against University of Pennsylvania. They're out there really trying to take away passing lanes. And this is the Temple zone defense you're used to seeing. Not the one with the hands up Harry, nobody moving around. <laughs> Look at the length on these shots, though, Eddie. Neubauer, 15 feet away, off the heel. Gets his own. Woods tries the fancy stuff. Holland bails him out, winds up on the foul line. Foul car Starfin. And yes, the Owls are pushing the defense out of the perimeter, but the distance on these shots is unreal. And that's why you get the long rebounds. Here's Woods. He knows he's in trouble inside. Ron Holland can't handle it, but he goes back up, and there's Vic Karstarfin right on the elbow. Ron Holland, Milko Levers, they know their roles when they're in the game for the LaSalle Explorers, and they try to get it off of either easy layups or the offensive glass to get their point production. Holland, a transfer from St. Bonaventure. One out of two, and Spears high for the glass. The South's already tried nine three-pointers in less than eight minutes. They're two out of nine. Karstark and warding off with the right arm. Woods riding him. Kilgore's three. Long rebound, Strickland. Good hands by Woods or Holland. And it winds up in Doug Overton's possession. That's Neubauer. Woods splits the seam, ball fake, left hand. Real nice move by Randy Woods as he used his eyes to really shield off the defender. The defender went with the fake of the head and used the left hand. Here's Macon with Overton. The matchup of all Americans, likely number one picks. Macon's 12 feet away. Use the screen perfectly. That's what Mark Macon can use. He can use his body. He's taller and a little stronger than Doug Overton. Makes it real strong with his body inside him. Neubauer, the push shot, around and out. And Kilgore will lead the near side break. Spears is posted. The half hook. Short, Mark making the tip. Didn't try to do too much, just scored the ball. Well, what happened there is with the shot, Doug Overton did not do a good job blocking out Mark Macon, and Mark Macon went right to the hole. He knows that his Donald Hodge, the seven-foot center, is on the bench. He's got to get in there and rebound the basketball a little bit. Good cut by Overton. Over Kilgore. No rebound by Shelton. Weak side offensive rebound. That helps an awful lot. Donnie Shelton's got his average. It's a five-point ball game. Kilgore, why not? That's why. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't understand why he would shoot that quickly. Holland, the high screen. 
Woods, same kind of shot, but this one he right goes down. Well, you know what happened there? James Spears was a little worried that he had the smaller and quicker Randy Woods. He was thought he may drive by him. Randy Woods, a little jab step, shot. Car Starkman right around Woods. Strickland not expecting the basketball, didn't post up hard. And Mark Mickens doing a good job. Floor. Yeah, Mickens understands he's got to slow it down a little bit here. He's he going to back in over 10 to 12 feet away. Off the heel. And Mark got away with his second foul there. Yeah, Mark making a little upset that he missed the shot. Almost got caught. Wow. Bad foul, Car Starkman. Randy Woods got the big smile on his face. You got three free throws, buddy. That's he, a bad foul. Kostarthen knows he has to go way out. He has to step up there, hand straight up, he reached in. Not much of a foul, though. And Michael Harden was at the scorer's table to get Mick Kilgore. Harden, the other point guard, is in. So karstarfen has got a pair as well. This is a much better matchup for Temple Owls. I think Chaney, John Cheney's made a nice move here, put in Harden and Kostarthen to cover the guards a little bit quicker on the outside. The perimeter game of LaSalle is what's going to hurt Temple this evening. Michael Harden, former All-American high school player from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. There he is. Has been a disappointment offensively for John Cheney, but has incredibly quick hands playing perimeter defense. And we'll see how the matchups go man-to-man. -man. Woods, of course, with the hat trick now. Ties it at 20. Has them all. And LaSalle retakes the lead. They're on an eight-point run. Temple had won five consecutive games against the Sal before last year's 63-62 loss. The last time they lost before that came back in 1984 in a memorable contest fueled by Terrence Stansbury's long-range bombing. Here now is our Big Five flashback. A dip into the archives for a classic Big Five moment. February 1984, two teams that would combine for 46 wins met for a shot at the Big Five title. LaSalle had the lead in overtime. Chip Greenberg had a chance to ice it. Stansberry will have it. Four seconds, he's got to do something with it. It's good! It is good! Yet it was LaSalle which would regroup and claim a one-point double overtime win. The season would end with LaSalle and Temple sharing the Big Five championship. And welcome back to an electrified Philadelphia Civic Center. There's the view from this side of the river. And here's the view of Randy Woods on the move. Randy Woods, the defender from Temple, is rushing at him, but there's the nice left-handed move. He just cut between both Spears and Strickland and used the left hand. 21-20 LaSalle. Temple is already over the limit in terms of team fouls with seven. LaSalle with just a couple. And again, a victory tonight would give the Explorers 1,000 wins. They'd be the youngest program to reach 1,000. They've done it in just 61 seasons. LaSalle is rated 13th all-time in winning percentage right around 665 and Speedy Morris has done nothing but add to the storied legacy of this uh, LaSalle basketball program. Well, Speedy got his 100th win, one of the fastest ever in college basketball with uh, five other people that got it in that same season. So, I mean, he's done a real nice job as he's come to LaSalle Explorers and obviously he has another good basketball team. A lot of people thought this year with Lionel Simmons graduating they wouldn't be as good as they are right now sporting a 7-1 record. Well, I'll tell you what, back in October, Speedy really liked this team. He liked the chemistry, and I think Randy Woods has matured so much as a player and as a person, really, in his second year of Division I basketball, and Speedy knew it before any of us, obviously. That's Michael Harden handling the basketball with Jeff Neubauer against a man-to-man -man offense, man-to-man -man defense. Macon will go left. Woods has him and strips him. Macon gets it back. No look past Strickland. Car Starfit has his third three-pointer, and his offense has been key. But you know what's also good with Michael Harding bringing up the basketball, Jeff Neubauer's covering him. The, the, before Karstarthen bringing up the ball, Randy Woods is covering You don't want Randy Woods really to have to cover you bringing up the basketball. Overton forces a 12-footer. There's a whistle, and we're going to walk the length of the floor. No, it's uh, a foul on Donnie Shelton. 
just the third team foul on LaSalle, so possession belongs to, uh, to Temple. John Chaney's made a lot of moves here in the first half, and I guess a lot of it has happened with Hodge on the bench, but he's making moves right now with the matchup because he has problems, especially with Randy Woods matchup. It's matching uh, him, so he puts Michael Hard in the ballgame. Haven't seen this set out of John Chaney with the three small guards on the floor simultaneously. Harden running some clock, now making with Overton. Dougie has the eyes. Staring him down, head and shoulder fake. The double team from Woods, and the kick to Karstarfin is short. Shelton high for the board. Nice little double team by Randy Woods. Gets there just in time. Look at the range on that, way short. That's 26 feet, and Speedy just gives Dougie a, a wave like, what are you doing? Harden, great position, Strickland, two feet out, uses glass. Real nice entry pass by Michael Harden, a nice strong bounce pass, the only pass he would have got there, good catch, and using the backboard by Strickland. Speedy's going to go back to Hurd, President, and Levers at the next stoppage. And the high post area, very vacant. There goes Holland flashing to it. And Dougie calls for some motion. New Bowers push shot. Short, Strickland another board. And Karstarfin leads. Spears takes it strong and is fouled by Shelton. Good job running the floor by James Spears. Just the out and out hustle beats Shelton up the floor. One thing LaSalle wanted to do tonight was beat Temple up the floor. But it came the opposite way here as James Spears from Glen Mills High School pushes down the court hard and gets the easy shot. So Shelton, Holland, and Neubauer are all out with 7.36 remaining. First half. He's got some kind of upper body. I used to look like that, those muscles. <laughs> I used to be a Gold's Gym every night. Of course, Spears was an all-state player in football and in basketball at Glen Mills under coach Tom Mann. They won that PIAA championship a couple of years ago. And Mick Kilgore comes back in. He has one foul. Now, with, with Karstarfin going to the bench, Harden will have the basketball. Let's see if Randy Woods covers Harden. It's going to be difficult for Harden if he has to bring the basketball up. So Temple has rebuilt the lead to six. It's 27-21. The Owls on top. A share of the Big Five City Series Championship is on the line. Basketball camps I really love to go and see because those kids are there for one reason, and that's to learn this game. And, and I want to try to do as much as I can to help them along that path and try to give them some of the things that I've picked up and hopefully help their career. It really is enjoyable to get out there to, um, to see the joy in the kids' lives when you come out. And just to be able to help them out and even if it's just one ball player who you can touch or you can make better, then, you know, you've done a good job. Barkley, Hawkins, and the Sixers show you their stuff at the Sixers overnight and day camps. Our projection screen looks so real, you'll feel like part of the show when you watch the new RCA home theater. It also has surround sound that's so real. Stand back, everyone. You'll forget you're sitting at home. Let me handle this. The RCA Home Theater also has Picks and Picks. It lets you watch two things at once, in color. Another way, RCA is changing entertainment again. Eddie, we talked early in our pregame about low post position and the big people for Temple. Here's an example. Well, he broke the plane, as coaches will say, to make a better passing angle. Michael Harden, watch him go baseline here. He'll take it down. Push it there. It's a good entry pass into Strickland, the good catch. But it was the pass that made the whole play, the nice bounce pass to Mark Strickland. And with the victory over Pennsylvania, the Owls now have more City Series wins than any other Big Five team. Who did they pass? University of... That's good stuff. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. I'll have to think of that. I'll say... Say it, say it, say it. The Hawks of St. Joe. Go. There you go. The Hawks of St. Joe. With 80 That's the university? The Hawks? Yes. Okay, thank oh, you. I'm with him. Oh, man. Our producers have a problem tonight. University of doesn't eliminate it. <laughs> That's right. That's why I said it. <laughs> it's a six-point basketball game. It's Temple's lead. John Griffin of Hawk Hill hopes he can keep get that lead back. He plays the Temple House twice this year in Atlantic 10 and Big 5 action. And we'll have them on the 2nd of February on PRISM for Big 5 Hall of Fame induction. That's a men's, women's doubleheader that night. 
Karstarfen remains on the bench, so it's Macon, Kilgore, Strickland, Spears, and Harden for Temple. President, Overton, Woods, Leverst, and Jack Hurd for the Sal. And Hurd is scoreless. Here he goes running baseline as Jack. Woods comes off of the other way as Kilgore extends the defense. See, they did this last year. You have Lionel Simmons roaming on the inside. You don't have Lionel Simmons anymore. So the middle is wide open for LaSalle right now. There's the high post, which is available. And Broderick President can't get it. Has his own rebound. Powers it back up. Never got off the ground as Mark Strickland came out with it. And the middle is up wide open. Anybody can get a shot inside there. But that's a good move by Temple, taking away the perimeter game of LaSalle. Double screen for Macon. Comes off into the foul line. Woods double team, so it's Harden who's open and got it. Michael Harden, who's just about a 15% shooter this year. That's a confidence builder. And that was real nice ball movement by Temple. They've rushed her shots coming down a few times, but right there they made real nice crisp pass and a wide open Michael Harden. Heard from way out again, and he's got it. Jack Hurd's on the board. The distance on these shots is unreal. Well, I'm sure John Shaney says, I can't get the zone to go that far out. Macon splits the double team, has an eight-footer. High percentage shots for Temple. Well, that was perfect, as Mark Macon just powered the dribble under control. The defender did not come out. He stopped and didn't over-penetrate. Mark's four out of seven with eight points. Karstarfen with nine, leads Temple. Low post lever, Spears puts it away. And it's Jack Hurd who takes the baseline. And some trapping pressure. Double team Kilgore in trouble. But he's eight inches taller, so he goes over the top. Macon's got Spears. Lay it up and good. James Spears has six points off the bench. Six big points. Six unexpected points. First thing he's doing well is catching the basketball. Mark Macon knew he was wide open. Made a LaSalle defender come to him. Another three from Woods. And again, he didn't really square up. Foul will be called on James Spears, sending Milko Levers to the line. Well, what happened there? James Spears just tried to out-jump Milko Levers. Instead of putting a body on him, he saw the shot goes up. He just tried to use his athletic ability. Where do you see Milko's free throw shooting statistics? Would you believe he is 12 of 33 for 36%. There you go. What's, there you go. What's wrong with that? It's working on it. Ron Holland replaces Broderick President. I'll tell you, this kid on the line, Milko Levers, he's only a he's junior now. He's improved every year since he's come to LaSalle. And where'd he come from? A long way. Harden Simmons? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at Broderick President. Holland. You're talking about Milko. Right. And he plays with a lot of passion, you know, always brings it to the table. The lead is seven. Michael Harden, as expected, head up now with Randy Woods. Posted his spears, had to go off his hands. It's just what you said, Eddie. He did not just catch yeah. the basketball. See, I complimented him twice on catching the basketball. That's the first thing you got to catch the ball. Who cares about the move? First, you need the basketball. Doesn't look it into his hands. Loses it. There's Randy Woods. Randy Woods is always around the basketball. A very well played first 15 minutes. Two turnovers aside. Skip pass. Hurd has all day to load. Maybe he was too open. Brock Holland climbs the back of Nick Kilgore. Team foul number five on the south. And President will come back to the scorer's table and replace Brock Holland. You notice Temple does have the, the style that they want tonight. There really has no been breakaway layups for LaSalle, no run and gun. They have 34 points, which is great offense compared to what they did the other night against Penn, but they're doing it in a half-court set. There's already been 22 three-pointers fired up tonight, 14 by LaSalle. Kilgore gives the bump and takes it on his right hand. Around her triple team and throws up an air ball. Strickland, though, has it. And it'll be on the line. Foul on Doug Overton. 
you, if you're a coach and you want to know why can't Mark Strickland go back up, he's got to go up strong right there. He gets fouled. Kilgore leans in. Good defense by LaSalle. There's Mark Strickland. He's doing a good job, but now he's got to go up. That's really a ticky-tack foul. He's got to score the basketball, and he knows it too. There's Dougie, who now has two personal fouls. And unlike Coach Cheney, Coach Morris leaves his senior leader on the floor with the two personals. Strickland's got it. Temple notoriously a, a poor team shooting-wise from the field at 42%, at 50% in the first half, 13 out of 26. And Strickland barely catches the front of the rim. The lead is eight. High post levers. It's her who runs the baseline, pops out on the far side. Randy Woods cracks back to him, looks for the shot, penetrates, jump step, lay it up, no! Levers has a board, and a putback. What happens with the penetration, if you get inside a zone defense, people are going to go after each other, then your rebounding assignments are in trouble blocking out, and Milko Levers gets the two. And he's waving to the crowd to fire it up, and they respond. There's Macon. Woods looking to double team, he does. Mark wants it back. He'll go right this time, Levers the double team. Mark fades away and gets the roll. But that's a, too good, a good two-man set there. Warren and Macon just not rushing the shot, making each other extend the defense, and where Randy Woods can't double team the basketball. Kurt's gonna take it on the dribble. Block Strickland again, Levers cleans up. Milko's just around the basketball, does what Speedy Morris needs, puts the ball back in the hole. And John Cheney all over Mick Kilgore to be checking out on Milko. Bacon will break down and fade away. Short, Strickland, great athleticism. And a foul called on President. As he fouled Strickland, I guess he fell down on him. Yeah, that, Strickland does a real nice job with the hands to keep this ball in play at all times. Look at this, right goes right back up, great quickness once he hits the floor. President just falls down, hooks him right there, and then uh, say you're sure not supposed to hook me, gives him a little pack. And they have not let a whole lot go at this officiating crew. Both teams over the limit. President sits down for Bron Holland. Here's Mark Strickland. The two inside guys for Temple should be prepared. Mark Strickland doesn't shoot the ball real well from the free throw line. They've got to get ready to get in there and get the miss if it goes up. Shade under 55%. And Macon steals it. Beautiful. Mark Macon reads the rebound and undresses Bron Holland. That's a smart move. Macon knew that there could be a possible miss. Bron Holland's got to rebound it and flare the elbows out. So someone coming in there is going to catch something not to steal the basketball from him. Randy Woods through the legs behind the back with Michael Harden. Skip pass Overton to the baseline, 16 feet out. Got it down, Doug Overton now with six. And the Owls have survived very well. Remember, Don ha Donald Hodge went to the bench at the 14.30 mark. Michael Harden loves to penetrate. Has the dish off to Strickland. It is Speedy Morris who's up. And apoplectic. At Dick Slomkowski. Woods a three. He's got 14. And that's got to be 25 feet away. <laughs> he should get more than three for that. Really? It's amazing. We're inside two minutes. It's 41-36. Temple on top. They've led pretty much throughout the first half. Strickland with wide eyes, wants the ball. Has it, and the foul! Hello there, Mark Strickland! Well, we talked about Mark Strickland in the pregame. We thought more on the offensive rebounding the basketball right here without Donna Hodge power dribble. Shooting on the turn again, but he makes it, and he's showing some emotion. Donna Hodge is a happy young man right now. President returns. Again, they shuttle President and uh, Ron Holland. 
Lead back at seven. See, if Mark Strickland could give Temple some offense, that would really help, especially with Donald Hodge in the ballgame. Most teams collapse on Donald Hodge. will leave Strickland alone. Mark Strickland, now a junior, has to score the basketball for Temple on some occasions. Misses his third free throw, is one of four from the line, but has nine points. Overton, tough bump from Harden, throws up the air ball, may have thought he was going to get a whistle, and a turnover. We have a timeout on the floor, and we invite you to stay with us at halftime to look at the relationship between John Cheney and Mark Macon, a unique relationship it is indeed. Here's a preview of what the coach tries to get across to his players. I've always believed and loved very much the idea that I not just be a coach, but I could be someone who could teach, transform behavior, transfer behavior, and translate it in a manner in which you see somebody who would go out and live it. If that's what you're talking about, then that's the most meaningful aspect of it. And it sounds great when I see a quote coming from him that he may have said something, maybe may have changed it around, but that's what it should be. But it may have had its founding from the, the experience that he's had uh, from my lectures or, or whatever. But that's what a student should be. And then one of these days, I'm hoping to hear it from one of his sons or one of his daughters. Then you know that uh, that's what you're here for, to propagate, not just propagate life, but to propagate uh, uh, the enhancing of life as I see it. It indeed will be a fascinating uh, ten minutes or so with uh, Mark Bacon and John Cheney. We've entitled it Of One Mind. We'll also, of course, have first half highlights, scoring stats, and more. So stay with us. It's the college basketball beat, bringing you of one mind at halftime. There's John Cheney, the enigmatic John Cheney. Just when you think you've got him figured out, he, he goes another direction on you with longtime assistant head coach Jim Maloney to his left, and Dean Demopoulos to his right. Well, I think in the first half, Larry, the three of them, John Cheney made some real nice moves, changing in their set defense and matchups and making some good substitutions, especially with Donna Hodge in foul trouble. Here's the screen for Macon, but he's got to come 30 feet out to accept the basketball. Behind the back, Woods the double team. Mark forces a 17-footer in and out. The keep alive belongs to Milko Levers, then he tosses some tough-looking elbows, and James Spears raises a hand and says, why me? And that was a poor shot by Mark Macon. He's done a real nice job in the first half. Two-man game, they passed the ball around there. That was forced. Randy Woods, head up with his former public league enemy, Mick Kilgore, gets a screen, and it's out of bounds. Wolf stay with LaSalle with 51.4 and 26 on the shot clock. And I was going to say, LaSalle could uh, go for the quick shot and exchange two possessions for one, but no longer as we're inside 45. President, a rare shot. Well off target, it's Kilgore. Has Michael Harden. Will they hold for one? I guess not. Kilgore throws it up wild, but there's the weak side. Garbage cleaned up by Mark Strickland, and he's in double digits now with 11 points. And the lead is nine. Speedy Morris and LaSalle will hold for one. As Stefanski will visit with the head coach of LaSalle on his home floor. Speedy Morris coming up in a moment at halftime. Jack Hurd cuts without the ball. Head fake. Hangs it shy, four seconds, Macon sees it, has one more chance at it, and Doug Overton, that would count! Hard off the glass. So we've completed 20 minutes of intense, passionate City Series basketball here live at the Philadelphia Civic Center with the Temple Owls on top of the LaSalle Explorers by a score of 45 to 36. Mark Macon has 12 mixed strict... Uh, Strickland with 11, 14 for Randy Woods to lead the LaSalle Explorers. And Ed Stefanski standing by with the head coach at LaSalle University, the one and only William Speedy Morris. Here's Eddie. Coach, you got Donald Hodge, got that two fouls early. John Cheney takes them out, but you didn't really capitalize on him on the bench. Well, they have other good players too, Eddie. And when you're playing as poorly as we are, let them get second shot opportunities like they are. I mean, their layups, uh, you know, 
they're going to score. And we're just doing a terrible job of not not getting our buys on people, forgetting about people. And offensively, we're still, we, we, we think we're playing like all Merrimack. So, you know, that's, that's not the way you can beat a Temple team. And, you know, we know we have to score from outside, but you've got to go inside, outside first. And, uh, we're a little selfish out front and, and uh, not getting really good score. We're not making shots because we're not getting good shots. You're really extending that zone on you. Yeah, the middle is wide open. The middle is wide open, and we have to take advantage of that. We get a couple of cutters in there just to get it in and kick it back out, you know. Uh, that's, that's what we have to talk. We'll make some adjustments at halftime. And, you know, I, I think it's see a different look in the second half. Okay, good luck. Speedy, Speedy's not as confident, Larry Rosen, as he was against Villanova, but he'll make some adjustments. Let's see if the same adjustments he made against the Wildcats. All right, uh, back on the 22nd at DuPont in December, Speedy flat out said at halftime, hey, we're better. We're going to come out and win this game in the second half. A little bit more subdued, Speedy Morris. Uh, tonight at halftime, his club down by nine points. As mentioned, now we're going to look into the relationship between Mark Bacon and John Chaney. Mark making the first national recruit for John Chaney. John and Mark have developed kind of a, a fascinating uh, way of going at one another. It's called Of One Mind. It's coming up next. The teacher, philosopher, father confessor. This is John Chaney's early morning hardwood classroom. You sit there with a guy running at you, you'll become a time bomb. The lessons have been taught for 30 years. The messages have not always hit home, but for one special young man, the impact has been immeasurable. One of the greatest things he said to me when he first came here uh, uh, was that uh, I'm going to be a clone. For four years, Mark Macon has been fulfilling that promise, the ultimate sponge, a coach's dream, a living legacy to last a lifetime. Together they speak in one voice. I just, I, I fell in love with him, you know, with with what he had to give <clears throat> and I wanted to soak up as much as I can and I, and, and I still want to soak up everything and I did want to clone him in a way where you would see him in, in, in myself you know you wouldn't just see him or me being a robotish type of a person it would be when I spoke you could hear him coming out of me just like before I got here when I spoke you heard Coach Reed coming out of me John Cheney has always carried the description tough to its fullest potential. A hard-nosed Philadelphia guard, mentally disciplined in every area of his life. Mark Macon has come to embody that same toughness, developed in the schoolyards of Saginaw, Michigan. There, Mark was a first-team high school All-American under the tutelage of coach Norway Reed. It was Reed who instilled in Macon a sense of family and pride. It was Reed who chose Temple with the instructions, handle with care. And I think he ended one sentence as I can remember. Mark gets a little silly on you sometimes too, which, which, which meant to me is that regardless of how serious Mark gets about doing what he's supposed to do and discharging his duties, that he's still a child. He's still a youth. He's still young. He still must have some feeling about others. He still must involve himself in a youthful life. You don't want him to grow up so fast that he takes on a serious aspect of life and neglects to understand and get a full blessing about his youth. And, and these are some of the things that he talked to me about and, and understood that. Also stolen nice by strip. Macon. Oh, was he waiting? Mark Macon. The first test of the relationship came in Macon's landmark freshman season. The Owls were streaking toward number one in the polls with the eyes of the nation on the gemstone. Yet Cheney removed Macon from the media spotlight. First year, when I singled him out and said to him, you're not going to speak to the reporters anymore, after that was over, Mark came to the office. He was happy because he knew then that every time the reporters walked in, that, in the dressing room, they had a mic in front of his face, made him feel very uncomfortable in the, in, 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 in the face of the other players. I mean, there was Tim Perry, Mike Vareswick, uh, Howie Evans, Ramon Rivas, those guys had helped to build this program. He was just a freshman. For him to be sitting there in the presence of other players, now I didn't know that the other guys were going to have jealousies, but I know human nature. And I know that this was going to act not only as something which he was going to be uncomfortable with, but I know that it was going to destroy our team. That was the year we were number one. And we were number one because I did not show that he was my special 
you know, I got a chance to listen to those guys talk, too. So then again, I knew what to say when they posed those questions to me. <clears throat> and um, it, it, it also was, was very nurturing for me, you know, because when I did get a chance to talk, I knew what to say. And when Macon finally spoke, he was a revelation. Game, period. Because whatever is in the dark, and it's the old saying, and it's a saying before my time, and I, maybe before y'all time, whatever whatever is in the dark always comes to the light, and it's, it's the same for lying, too. Y'all remember that? You know, when you when you lie, the truth, the truth will set you free. Yeah, it's the same concept. This college sophomore had clearly begun to take on the values of his coach. Yet he still appeared enigmatic. His robotic demeanor in uniform belied those heartfelt emotions. It's fun to me, you know, to, to, to make people think, why is he not smiling? You know, why is he not doing this? You know, I wonder what's going on in his mind. And, and that's, that's, that's what I want, want people to do. I want them to think, you know, because I want people to know what's, what's actually going on in my head. I may be laughing and giggling all inside, but and just not know. showing it. I mean, do you know? Yeah, because I do the same thing myself. I know you do. I like for people to think that, uh, that I'm a bad guy. I don't care, uh, especially when I'm going to war. I mean, if, we're, if we're, we're, I've never been one to, uh, to smile uh, when, I, when, I, when I played uh, played basketball because, or any games, I, I just felt that it was uh, something that I just want to, you know, I just want you to think about uh, think about me because I'm not only am I giving the image to someone who's looking at me who is just a fan, but I'm giving that image to uh, to my opponents as well. Macon has a legendary ability to focus, regardless of the emotional volatility of his coach. But viewing Mark only as a basketball player ignores vital aspects of his development. A mid-season visit to St. Christopher's Hospital for Children reveals new elements of his character. Mark displays an openness, a love for these kids, which shows a full range of human development. Presents, bearing gifts. Thank you. <laughs> Before Christmas. These here are glasses. Thank you. A lot of us try to serve too many masks. That's a big problem. If he's serving the outside public or the fans in the stands, or he's serving the media, if he's serving somebody else, and he's trying to serve the dictates that I offer to him, we got a big problem. He must put into focus and he must put into harmony, and he must harness it so he can direct it. And I think that he's able to do that. Balance, I think he's heard me talk about balance. Not just balance in life, not just balance on the court, not just balance in shooting in your legs underneath your shot. He's heard me talk about balance, and as I look at it, I transfer it to every, every day in life. Now, did he buy what I was selling? I would have to believe that he did. It boils down to out of balance and inner balance. And once you have inner balance, then you can control what's outside of you. And, and I think I have a good handle on it right now, and, and, and I need to, to grasp it much more than, than, than uh, for the upcoming years. You know, that's going to be that's going to be starting after this year in my life, you know. And I really have to get a, a great hold on to it because I know I'm going to face a lot of problems where I have to make crucial decisions, decisions where... It may affect my life, you know, a change in my life, those type of decisions. So I'm going to have to have a, a certain inner, inner balance or inner patience where when I make that decision, I have to say, okay, this is the right decision, whether it may be wrong in somebody else's eyes, but it's right in my eyes. And so the basketball portion of this relationship moves to its inevitable crescendo. Now all the hours, the words, the values carry a deeper meaning as they prepare to say farewell. As we go on from here, just put forth as much of an effort as we can and, and just make sure that uh, it's a sweet, sweet berry that we chew on, that we chew on something very sweet for the rest of the year, uh, whether it's Final Four, uh, whether it's the back end of a trail, uh, if we end up there, that we end up uh, uh, ending the way we started. How you start is how you finish. We started together uh, very successfully, and we want to end the same way. Leaving, leaving this program after being here for four years and, 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 and getting so close to, uh, to coach 
as well as, as, as like, as I can say, my sister or my brother, you know, getting so close and then have to have, having to leave, but knowing you can always go home. I'm sorry. Why do you suppose we only feel compelled to chase the ones who run away? Immaturity. You're a very stupid person. You tell your brother he messes with me, he messes with my whole family. I have a head for business. And I'm bad for sin. Very good. Touche. Meaning. Midwinter's Eve in downtown Philadelphia. It's cold on the outside, of course, but it's obviously heating up here on the inside of the Philadelphia Civic Center where LaSalle University calls home. Temple has a nine-point lead at halftime. And welcome back, everyone. Hope you enjoyed our halftime report. I'm Larry Rosen with Ed Stefanski. Temple builds a nine-point lead here through half number one, and the game kind of has had the flow that we expected, really. Yeah, it's to Temple's advantage is half-court set. LaSalle wants to go up and down. They, as Speedy alluded to, Marymount, they're still out there firing, chucking, and ducking. That's not what it's going to be tonight, and it's right to Temple's liking. Speedy even said his club a little selfish, taking that first available three. Yeah, but that's the way LaSalle's played a lot this year. Maybe one or two more passes and you get an open shot because Temple has extended that defense and put a hand in the face of the shooter. All right, we'll go back, look at the key moments from our first half of our Prism Exclusive featuring Temple and LaSalle and featuring Mark Macon. Loose ball scramble, and Mark is often in a position where he's got to take the tough shot. Well, here, as we said, it is hammer time for Mark Macon. Mark with a dozen points in half number one. But the X factor, the man we pointed to at the top of the game, Eddie and I, is that Mark Strickland doing what he does best off the offensive glass. And that time he got his legs together and powered it back up. So Strickland with 11 in double figures. Karstarfin has three three-pointers. Spears a big six points off the bench. You don't see Donald Hodge main there. He got in foul trouble early on. Meantime, on the other end of the floor, you expect the points to come out of the backcourt duel of Woods and Overton. Randy Woods here is going to show us that ball fake that we enjoy so much. Randy from the angle. Shows the ball with the right. Takes it up strong with the left and knocks it down. And Dougie Overton, who only has six points in the first half, here's a dribble drive around Spears, the pull-up 16-footer. Of course, he knocks that down. And look at the statistics. Woods with 14. Six for Dougie. Levers with six. Heard a quiet five. He had those bunched together. Two points for President and Shelton. Meantime, in terms of team statistics, look at the shooting percentage for the Temple Owls. Out of character. Exactly, and they're shooting the ball well from the three-point range, too. It's 50%, so they're doing an excellent job. They're getting better shots. I think Mark Macon was much better in the first half of not forcing the basketball, playing a two-man game with whoever the other point guard was in the lineup. 
And I think Mark may have taken seriously some of the comparisons with Doug Overton. Mark is 6 out of 11 with 4 rebounds. Dougie is 2 out of 11 with 5 rebounds. And that's a good matchup to watch. Well, you have a lot of NBA scouts here tonight to see Overton and Macon, two probable first-round choices. And I'm sure Macon knows that. What Macon's doing is backing in, breaking down people, and the pro scouts love to see someone can go one-on-one -on -one and get their shot. Eddie, we're counting possessions the number of times each team starts an offensive set has the basketball. Temple with seven more possessions at 35-28. That's significant. I believe that's key, the possessions in this type of game, because LaSalle wants to run and gun and get more possessions because they may not take as good a care of the basketball and get as good shots. In a half-court set, Temple getting more possession. That is a problem for Speedy Mars and his team. Both teams with only three turnovers, a very well-played first half. There's a look at the City Series, what is on the line. Villanova's done at 2-2. Two two. The winner tonight is short of at least a share of the City Series championship. And the all-time champion, the St. Joseph's Hawks, have won the most. Temple has tied the most, shared the most at 13, looking to make it 14 with a win tonight. And LaSalle down on the bottom. But uh, the City Series champions come out of this game the last five years. Now, this is the uh, classic game of this year so far. And it's done well for Temple here in the first half. Now a new half, and I'm sure Speedy Morris, as he told us at halftime, will make some changes. The middle is wide open right now for LaSalle. And here we go, setting the floor with Hurd, Overton, Woods, Levers, and President for LaSalle. Gilgore, Karstarfin, Macon, Hodge, and Strickland. Remember, Hodge played just four and a half minutes of the first half, went to the bench in tears after that second foul. Woods is alone. That's excellent patience to come out of the locker room. Real nice ball movement by LaSalle, and that was a wide open Randy Woods. He doesn't mind that kind of shot, the Speedy Morris. And that 3-2 defense will give up the corners if you don't really hustle on the back line. And Woods now with 17. Kilgore does it himself. Gets caught in the air, and Levers has the easy board. And we'll see if they go back to that set with a man open. Yeah, the they're corner. doing a completely different set. They're almost running a man-to-man -man, uh, against his own defense. And a lot of people run man-to-man -man set against Temple. Well, there's a bad Jack Hurd pass that winds up as four hands on the basketball. It will belong to Temple. And Speedy says to Jack, we never pass the ball like that. That's a bounce pass right there. The lead is six. We played a minute of half number two. Woods bodying up with Karstarfin. Macon off the screen from Strickland. Looks over Overton. And Kilgore with her. Kilgore takes it to his left. Jumps in, creates the contact, and will wind up on the foul line. So Mick Kilgore getting offensive. Well, it looks like Mick Kilgore believes he can take Jack Hurd to the basket. He likes to go to his left. Jack Hurd has to read the scouting reports. Kilgore likes to make the move off the left. He's got to take the left away, force Kilgore to go back on his right hand. Mick has not made a field goal tonight. And that's the second foul on Jack Hurd. See, Temple is right there. And John Chaney doesn't know what type of team he has. But to be a good team, you've got to shoot the three throws, too. Right now, he's looking. He doesn't know what type of team he's going to have this year. Sometimes they look brilliant, and sometimes they don't look like they're in the game. Well, he's got a mix of dynamic athletic players and smart, heady players looking for the chemistry. Hurd's three is off target. And Randy Woods out hustles Kilgore and fires it up. Oh, Randy Woods now is playing the ball game. And he has no conscience of any kind. Second shot. And you got to know when a three-point shot's going up, it's going to be the long rebound and it went into Randy Woods' hands. Overton and Macon. Levers trying to front on Hodge. Macon trying to break down Dougie. Has a baseline move. It's between the legs of Kilgore. Turnover. Well, that was a real, real nice pass by Mark Macon. He made the move, got the baseline, made a nice bounce pass right through the legs of Mick Kilgore. But in all fairness to uh, Mick Kilgore, that's not a pass that Mark usually makes. He's expected to take that shot when he gets that close. Heard unselfish. So was Woods and Levers with the left. And welcome back the Explorers, who have put eight straight up on the board. I got screened a little bit. I said, is Milko going with his left hand? Milko Levers improving every year. There's the good catch. Puts it on his left. The only one he would have got the three-point chance. Strickland trying to make the block. Wow. And Milko hung a little bit in the air. Just a little. 
And, you know, it's great with these halftime interviews with a coach like Coach Mars who tells you, look, I'm going to go tell the guys they've been too selfish in the first half. They a couple of trips down now, the extra pass, and the lead's back to one. Macon on the left hand. That looked like somebody got a piece. No, Morris drills the medium-range jumper. He's got 14. And a quick shot out of Mar. Here's Dougie. He's been quiet offensively. Throws it up wild. Gets his own. Knocked out of his hands. And uh, it's saved to her. They're just out scrapping Temple right now. Temple had the nice lead at halftime. LaSalle's come out from the talk at halftime. And they're all over the court. Five count is going, and Randy Woods commits the foul on Mark Macon. Randy Woods almost beat the pass to Mark Macon. He did a great job making Vic Karstartham pick up the dribble, then he almost beat the pass. Watch this. Karstartham picks it up. He almost gets the pass. This kid is great. Besides the quickness, he has terrific anticipation. Macon right off the set out of bounds. Kicks the heel. Strickland over the back of President. Knocks it down. Mark Strickland with 13 points. Yeah, Mark Strickland might have got away with a little push in the back, but who cares if you're a Temple fan? He gets the ball in the basket. Heard, loses his feet. Hodge has Karstarfin. Three on one, four on one. Alley oop to Strickland. I thought they were messing up the fast break. Hey, Karstarfin, Macon didn't push out, but there comes Strickland from nowhere. Wow. Strickland's got 15. Levers the step away. The cut is president. And Mark Strickland falls asleep. He doesn't really double team on Levers that allows President to be wide open. Milko so, Levers is having a great four game. Real good sense. Macon. Warding off with the right. Goes back left. Off balance. Out of control. No. Hodge just uses his height. Here's a two on two. Woods. Macon from behind. Woods blocked by Strickland. That'll be three free throws. But not a good foul by Mark Strickland. I mean, I wouldn't think that was a good shot by Randy Woods. He's just going to fire it. He knows in his mind he's going to fire it right now. Stops. And there's the just the touch from behind. Randy, an 80% free throw shooter. That's three fouls on Mark Strickland, who's been a revelation offensively with 15 points. See, I think Temple now a couple times down the floor. Donald Hodge is back in the ball game. Go to him. Let him feel the basketball. These big guys yes, want to feel shots. it, then they'll keep rebounding the ball for you. They don't want to see the guard shooting every time down. Woods leads all scorers with 21. You know, ball goes into Donald Hodge. They double, triple team. It'll, it'll come back out to you, and the guard gets the shot. That's two for two. Two for three, but Randy gets his own. How did he know to kick to the right side? What anticipation. And the Owls go man to man. High screen, Overton, two point shot is short. Hodge, Levers, it's Kilgore's basketball. So the Owls show man to man off the offensive rebound by Woods. The wheels are spinning. Low post, there's the entry, Hodge. Gives it back to Karstarfin. Gives it back to him. He wanted it. Victor's three. Yeah. Way off. See, Hodge made a good pass. He bunk, knock it back out. He got good position. Give it right back to the big guy. Heard. To the cutting levers. Hodge anticipates and intimidates. But Hurd can't cash in. It's Randy Woods who will reset it. Has Hurd for three. No, well off target. Levers the save into the hands of Kilgore. Two on one, Macon's got a trailer. What's he going to do? Take it himself. Yeah, that's real nice ball movement. The catch the basketball. Good defense by Doug Overton. But Macon just took his time, concentrated, and made the two. Al's go back to his zone now, it looks like, the 3 2. A pushed out perimeter look. President will not hurt you from out there. Neither will Levers. They're going through with the cutter, and then they try to match up. That's what they're doing right now. It's not a straight man-to-man. -man. They're still trying to match up. Karstarfin's got over to man-to-man. Randy Woods on the run. It's back to one point. Woods now with 24 to lead all scorers. Coming off that career high at Marimau. 
Hodges posted. He's got to go this time. Double team, good kick. Kilgore lay it up. Yes, they'll count it. And a foul on President. So great court sense by Don Hodge. Exactly. The ball goes into Donald Hodge. Milko Weavers can't play him. There comes Hurd. Good move, double team. Hodge has the awareness to know someone's open, finds Kilgore. You got to go into Donald Hodge, make LaSalle collapse, and they're going to be open shots. That's Kilgore's first field goal. He's one out of seven. Team is over 50%. Hands the bottom end. So the South comes out smoking, though, but half number two. It's a four-point Temple lead. We're coming back with a share of the City Series title on the line. LA Gear presents the Cannibal to Victory Sweepstakes, premiering January 1991. Visit a participating LA Gear retailer, try on a great pair of LA Gear sneakers, and enter the sweepstakes to win a trip for two to a pro basketball playoff game. You may even win a free pair of LA Gear sneakers. And watch for the announcement of today's LA Gear Unstoppable Player of the Game. Our projection screen looks so real, you'll feel like part of the show when you watch the new RCA home theater. It also has surround sound that's so real. Stand back, everyone. You'll forget you're sitting at home. Let me handle this. The RCA home theater also has picks and picks. It lets you watch two things at once in color. Another way, RCA is changing entertainment again. Some channels have movies. Some channels have sports. Only Prism has it all. Well, Eddie, you can't coach this kind of athletic ability that Mark Strickland brings to the floor. Well, Mark Strickland will make a real nice play by just out-racing Milko Levers, and I mean, just jams at home. But now he has to play defense. Watch, he has brought a president. He turns his head, loses his man wide open. If he's going to double-team, double-team. Just don't stay in that neutral area and gets burnt. A lot of people ask why Temple doesn't play man-to-man -man with its great athletes. John Cheney says, no one knows my team as well as I do. I know what they can and can't do. And I've only got two or three really good, solid man-to-man -man defensive players on my squad. And that's why we play zone. That and keep out of foul trouble. And Mark Strickland, one of the people he's referring to. Having fun? Uh, I knew this was going to be a real good game. This is... Uh a lot better than we had the other night offensively, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And in terms of intensity, Speedy's still fully dressed. The tie's knotted. Not too sweaty, you know. Looking sharp. Wiping the brow. Meantime, John's got the tie loose, the jacket off. Going to war. See if they follow the guards through. Looks man-to-man -man right now. Yes, indeed. Newbauer to the back cutting. Over and blocked by Strickland. Speedy wants goaltending. He's running the gym running out of the gym looking for the goal 10 the referee kind of enjoyed speedy he has a big smile on his face and speedy did a stop there on the side line three pointer mark macon mark macon has a little bit of a smile on his face too both teams enjoying themselves right now very aggressive good ball game lead is seven macon has 19 brought holland a why not that's why and macon soars this is the best I've seen Mark Macon play all year. He's just under control. Points, I don't matter about the points, he has 19, which is a lot, but he's just playing a nice floor game also. Double screen, Macon comes around off it, but Kilgore pops to the same spot. Looks like the Al's gonna run some clock. A high screen, Hodge is there, Woods just strips Karstarkin. He's gonna go head and shoulder, and Victor pushes him to the baseline. Air ball, foul called, Karstarkin. Randy Woods has gotten fouled on shots a lot on jump shots. But look at the defense. He gets right up in his face. There's a foul. The referee doesn't get it because he's out of position. But right here, good defense by Kostarthan. Not so he can blow him by, but Kostarthan just hits him on the elbow right there. And it's the foul. And Randy did have a cutting look of levers, but chose to, to go it alone on the baseline. Here he is back on the foul line where he's six out of seven tonight. Six of eight. Donnie Shelton in, Milko Levers out. See, you might have to have Macon. You don't want to. Kostarthan should be good enough to handle the basketball. He's quick with the basketball. But that's why when he brought in Michael Harden, then someone else could bring the ball up and wouldn't have to have Randy Woods all over. Not a lot of fun to bring the basketball up against Randy Woods. He has 25 on the evening. 
the lead is six. Here's your matchup, folks, right in the middle of the floor. Straight up man to man. Woods is talking the whole time. He's in Victor's ear the whole time. He's going to play for the Eagles next year. He's going to do some talking. Low post is Hodge. The double down. Spins baseline and one. There's no way that Donnie Shelton can cover Donald Hodge inside like that. They have to come down and double team. Here's the good catch. He's setting them up. No one's coming over to help. There's just a little pressure. Look at the spin move and the real power move to the basket. See, Neubauer's got to stay there. He can't go back for Kilgore. He's got to come down and help Shelton. Also, Shelton has to move Hodge back to the middle. Don't give Donald Hodge baseline. Donald can't complete the bottom end. The lead is at eight inside 13 minutes. Glad you're with us on Prism, the City Series Championship on the line as Temple leads LaSalle by eight. Shelton, they leave him alone out there. That's a good move by Strickland. The two big guys inside are trying to match up. The other three guys are playing a zone, a man to man. Shelton's got to shoot it, try to keep Hodge on as Newbauer hustling board. Woods a three. Flangs hard off the glass. And Mick Kilgore's got the floorboard. And Mick Kilgore's big enough at 6'7 to help out. He's got to rebound the basketball because Hodge and Strickland are putting bodies on people. Doug Overton has been quiet offensively. Six in the game, none in the second half. Hodge a little further out this time, trying to back down. Has Macon. Good baseline head and shoulder fake. Throws it off the bottom of the glass. And I believe we're going to get a foul called on Shelton to bail out Macon, who just threw that off the yes. bottom of the basket support. Mark Macon got real lucky. Watch this. He has no chances. He's underneath the basket. He wants to make the pass. There's nobody to go to. Neubauer gets a foul. Neubauer let, let Macon off the hook. He had no chance, Mark Macon. Macon's first foul shot of the day. And strangely, Mark's uh, free throw shooting percentage has dipped to 63 in this is senior year. He's got 20. So Woods with 25 for LaSalle. That man, Mark Macon, with 20. Well over 2,100 points. The all-time leading scorer for the Temple Owls. Lead back to double digits at 10. LaSalle's got to have a good possession and get a good shot here. I think they need to get Overton going offensively. See, if they run their set in continuity and keep moving it, they'll get a good shot against Temple's man-to-man -man here. They just have to have a lot of cuts and movement. Hodge lost his left sneaker, Eddie. Donald's out there limping around with just one sneaker on. And it goes through his legs and off his bare foot. A lot of hands. Holland 14 feet away. I know. John Cheney can't believe it. It's going through so many middle of their legs. That ball had some grease on it. You can't do anything about that. And down to our left, Donald is trying to get it dressed again. Now, some coaches would say, yo, get on the floor, dive on the ball. Don't bend over, dive on the floor. We've got a break from a red-hot Philadelphia Civic Center. Come back with us, won't you? Love you. You believe in the hereafter. <laughs> then you know what I'm here after. <laughs> Patrick Swayze is Detective Truman Gates. He's a country boy. We are gonna find Gerald's killer. But he's got some unfinished business in the city. Howdy. I want the man who pulled the trigger. I don't like this, Joy. The family killed his brother. A life for a life. Amen. 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 You mess with my brother, you mess with me. Settle this. Now. Anywhere we want! We ain't seen bad yet. But it's coming. Next of kin. Welcome back to the Philadelphia Civic Center. The Owls, an eight-point lead. Despite the best work of one Randy Woods, the junior out of Benjamin Franklin High School, now with 25 points. This looks like an NBA dribble drive. Well, you have to respect his outside shooting, and we know he'll throw it from anywhere. There's a, a miniature Wilt Chamberlain little duck. And right here's there. the one that was, was this goaltending well, on Strickland? Let's see if we can get good, it clean. Yeah, we have a good angle here. Overton makes a good backcourt cut. Whoa. 
That's right at the top Whoa. of the yard. Yeah, it's really close. I don't want to call that. Meantime, Doug Overton is only 2 of 14 from the field. Randy, Randy Woods at uh, 7 of 15. Mark making 9 out of 16. And Mark's shooting percentage steadily on the rise last five or six ball games. Here, Mark Macon is posted with Doug Overton far side. There's the matchup as Kilgore looks for him. Macon now will work his way around the double screen. Kilgore wants to be hurt on the dribble. That is blocked by Shelton. Kilgore has it back and has a layup. Well, Mick Kilgore was real worried about the defense and putting his body in there instead of straight up. He got the rebound back and made two. Still a 10-point advantage. Another Bron Holland three, an air ball. And Bron will get it back. I bet he's happy to get it back. He hasn't made a three-pointer all year. Oh, Mark Macon called. He's saying, good call, good call. Yep, Mark says, good call. Tells it, Dick Slumkowski, you can, you can call that one. You can tell Mark Macon this evening is up for this game as he's going against Dougie Overton. They've had great matchups. As we said, two probable first-rounders going at each other at, at Civic Center. Four team fouls on Temple, five on LaSalle. Macon has two. High post levers, doesn't look to score, but that man sure does, Jack Hurd. He has been off target. Floor board to Karstarfin. Long left wing pass, Kilgore takes it to the air. He's got 10 now. Excellent balance by Mick Kilgore from West Philadelphia High School here in Philadelphia. He did a nice job gathering himself together. Doug Overton's been out of control an awful lot tonight, kind of forcing it. Carl starkin has got a trailer. Uses his body, gets the foul on Overton, and Donald Smiling says, I was right there for you, buddy. And I'm surprised Vic Kerstarthen, I thought he saw Donald Hodge and could have just bounced it back to him. Nice little pass and it would have been a jam. But at least he's going to go to the line and get two as Doug Overton is struggling tonight and fouls him. Overton now is two for 15 for the floor and has three personal fouls. And Dougie just hoping his club can stay close enough that he can try to Rebound, they're down 13 at the 10-23 mark. Another for Karstarfin. And you, but you know they have those three-point shooters, so that lead is not big enough for Temple right now. Jack Hurd's in single digits with seven. And Speedy needs a timeout, down by 14 points. So we'll speed, see what Speedy can do, reaching into his tricky bag. Got to get on a big run midway through the second half. A student's first film can open some unexpected doors. And the winner is Nick Chapman for first date. I don't know you. I don't know your work. But I think that you are a very, very talented young man. And I'm never wrong about these things. And all that stands between him and success are a few personal compromises. Are you making a movie for Ellen? Well, we're talking about it. But there are some things even the most visionary director may not see coming. What are you talking about? Anything that Alan was involved with, it's dead. Neil, I don't have any money! But with a new approach. They want to make a video! They got any money? No! I'll do it! He may finally be getting the big picture. Don't come any closer, Nick, unless you want to walk funny for the rest of your life. She's just an actress, baby. Kevin Bacon in The Big Picture. Well, Mick Kilgore's offense, Ed Stefanski, has fueled this second-half run for the Temple Owls. Well, right there, he, he's by Hurd, but he wants to get the foul, too. Not a real good shot, but Hodges there. He'll retrieve it, and now he'll get the real nice, easy, close-in shot. Here, he does a good job handling the basketball and under control with his body. Doesn't force the penetration, goes by Hurd again, stops to the jump stop, and straight up over Brian Holland. We'll reset the floor. There's Kilgore with Macon, Karstarfin, Hodge, and James Spears who comes in for Mark Strickland. That's your Owls lot. In the meantime, it's Ron Holland, Jack Hurd, Milko, Levers, Doug Overton, and Randy Woods for Speedy Morris. The attendance tonight is shade under 8,000, 7,900 and change at the Civic Center. Double high post, Ron Holland pops off at Overton with Macon. Making a tremendous defensive player, a shutdown Overton Cole. Heard. Uses the dribble. 
And it's Holland popping out. Thinks about another three. He wants to back down Hodge. Levers with Spears. He sets the screen. Spears, good job to jump over on it, but Holland's got to lay it. Great set so offense. So that's what they had to do. They had to just run their set. Temple in the good man-to-man -man defense, but if they run it long enough, you're going to get an open shot. A little bit more continuity, a little bit more patience. Karstarfen and Woods banging on the front side. What a look to Spears. Victor Karstarfen with the look to James Spears. Well, what happened there, Randy Woods went for the steal, then they missed it, the penetration. They were all messed up in that man-to-man. -man. Dougie, that's a two-point shot. Holland and Spears, it's Spears who just rips it out of Bond's hands. James Spears is a man on the inside. Hodge wants the basketball. Two-man game, they're all cleared out. Now they go to the formula of three. With two shooters and a low post player on the same side of the floor, Donald. Spears flashes. Donald will try to beat him left. Woods gets a piece, but Spears has a lamp and misses. Overton looking cross-court for Woods. Low post for Levers. And it's going to belong to this. Oh, they're going to have a, a little bit of a discussion here. John Cheney is down by the water cooler. He's halfway out of the gym. And it will be his basketball. I was going to say Doug Overton got away with a terrible pass, but he didn't. As Artie McDonald came in and changed the saw the deflection. A real tough pass for Milko Levers to try to catch. A bullet. And it's Doug Overton who goes to the bench now. For Jeff Neubauer, number 24, center of your screen. He's got Karstarfin. Well, Speedy's not happy with the way he's playing. I mean, he's not played a good game, and Speedy's going to tell him. Kilgore has Spears posted. A little bit of standing around going on now. Karstarfin tries to come over a screen, cracks back to the basketball. Neubauer denies him. Shot clock to 20. That's the first time we've mentioned the clock tonight. Kilgore with the left. As Eddie said, his favorite move to the left. Misses. Spears the board. Spears again. <laughs> James Spears has had a terrific game. Ten points coming off the bench. He's just been real strong inside, putting balls back in the hoop. Ron Holland with Spears. Neubauer, Macon, Woods cuts well without the ball. Gets to the lane, throws it up wild, knocks it out of bounds. Belongs to the south. And John can't believe that one either. Roderick President in. Ron Holland out. The lead is at 16 points for that man's team. John Chaney with a smile on his face. Who says he doesn't smile during a, a basketball game? Big shot, Jack Hurd. That was a huge shot. Jack gets his 10th point, Jack Hurd. The lead's now 13, but they got to do it on the defensive end. The LaSalle explores. And on the glass. The Owls have lived on the offensive glass. Doug Overton back at the scorer's table, hoping for a dead ball. He wants in at the 725 mark. Kilgore backs off. Make it with Neubauer. See if Mark tries to break him down. With the left hand. Takes it to the baseline. Raises and fires. Kilgore to keep alive. Foul call on Broderick President, I believe, is Mick Kilgore working hard on the offensive glass. Well, if you're going to get back in the game and beat Temple, you're down 13. If Macon's going to miss, you got to get the rebound right there. Good position by Kilgore. He gets pushed by Levers, but they get Neubauer on the foul. And Doug Overton is back, a young man that's missed only four minutes of playing time all year. Sits out for a couple of here. And his former Philadelphia Public League rival, Nick Kilgore, misses the foul shot. Talking about back-to-back -back Mark Ward Award winners. When you shoot the ball that poorly from the foul line, you think maybe you'll win some people up there if they're going to miss. But John Cheney elects to bring the team down and get a little bit of a timeout. And doesn't want any over-the-back fouls. His team is up 14 with seven minutes remaining. Woods. Way off balance. Well short. President has it to Overton. Nine feet out Dougie. Air balls. I've never seen Dougie this out of sorts. Great save making into the hands of Spears. And Doug Overton's got to dig deep right now. 
Screen, Hodge for Macon, takes it to the paint, in the air, left hand shy, Overton, has a breaking herd. That wasn't a very smart shot. wide open guy. Karstarkin leads a three on two. Takes it at Milko Levers and will wind up on the foul line. We've got some kind of ugly looking shots going on right See, now. I don't know why Macon took a bad shot like that, but here's the crossover by Doug Overton having a real rough game here. The start then sees it's Milko Weavers just trying to get the body and go up with the left. Weavers doesn't have to foul that hard. He's got the big height advantage. May could have come with a block, but he didn't. The Owls lead is 14. We'll be back at the Civic Center in just a moment. Okay, we're open. The McDermott Brothers. We're giants. Legends in our own mind. A rebel. You don't touch my brother. Harassing innocent people. I am shocked. A rowdy. What are you doing? <laughs> a Romeo. I'll show you mine, you show me yours. Life sure has thrown them. <laughs> a lot of curves. <laughs> I'm only 17. The sexual demands of this job are too much. <laughs> Please. Chickens. They're rats with a good reputation. I hate them. But now is the time for three boys. Yeah! <laughs> to become men and to face the world. Dad! The only way they know how. He's dead. What should we do? We'll take away. <laughs> no! I... Staying together. What a night! The only thing crazier than love is brothers. A bit of a coming of age, if you will, for the freshman from Glen Mills, named James Spears. Coming of age, he's a man. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's a man's body, and he just takes it up, misses, goes right back up with it. Oh, he's strong. James Spears is strong, and I don't think they really expected him to give him the minutes this year that they 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 are getting from James Spears. But I'll tell you what, you got a career high 10 points out of James Spears, a career high 15 points out of Mark Strickland. That's pretty much 25 points out of the four position, although some of Spears and Strickland's points came while Hodge was on the bench. That's a major, major difference in, in this John Chaney team looking for that inside offense. Karstarfin's alone at the other end of the floor. He doesn't mind, he's got 12. Make it 13. And the Al show man-to-man -man basketball again. Roderick President of three, and he's got it. Is it two or three? I think he two, but a bucket I think Temple will give him all night long. Okay. Two-pointer, it's 14. Tough matchup for, uh, for Jeff Neubauer with Vic Karstarfin. Pretty much a four-guard set now for LaSalle. Spears a screen for the Macon J. No. That basket will not count. And a pushing foul on the inside. On Donald Hodge, who now has three. Joining Strickland and Karstarfin with three. Donald Hodge has just not gotten in the flow all night. He got those two quick fouls. As his John Cheney's rule takes him out of the game, he just hasn't gotten the flow of it. Good cut, new ball. Great block, Kilgore. Get out of here. John Cheney, another big smile on his face. She does a real nice cut. Kilgore leaves his man and comes up with a nice block. She wants to try to keep it in bounds. Levers off the cut, throws it up, can't get it. Hodge has the rebound. Shakes off Jack Hurd like a flea, and Jack creates the turnover. What great hustle for the junior. He's open for three. It's justified. Oh, it's a great hustle by Jack Hurd. But as we just said, Donald Hodge not in the game. He cannot give the ball up right there. And Dougie clapping his hands. One on one with Mark Meekin. To the foul line. Karstarkin had Kilgore, couldn't get it to him. They reset. We're at five minutes and counting. Temple by 11. Hodges posted with levers. Shot clock at 12. Spears is posted. Kilgore to his left. Has Karstarkin for three. Well off, but Spears, first and 10. 
Quinn, it's a new floor here at the Civic Center as Spears and President went down hard. Kaboom, John Chaney wants a timeout. At the 435 mark, this is the equilibrium timeout that John likes to take to set up for the end game at the 435 mark, and we will set up for it as well. We'll keep it live. Look at these bodies flying. Well, they did a great job, LaSalle, defensively. Broderick Press is trying to block out James Spears. Remember, he's awfully strong. And watch these two guys just go down hard. Boom. I mean, you can hear it right on his arm and elbow, this James Spears, but he doesn't care. I don't think the referee called a walk or anything because there could have been a foul either way there as James Spears got it in a new 45-second clock to rerun the offense. And John Cheney's clubs have long been well-known for their ability to protect a lead late in the basketball game with the great guard play good free throw shooting they're up by 11 at 435 there's john let's see if we can eavesdrop a little bit John Cheney setting up for a stack for Mark Macon. His club up by 11. Well, I'll tell you, a lot of people all week have been talking about Temple. They, you know, not a good performance against Penn, but tonight they've done a real nice job against the LaSalle Explorers. Got into a half-court set, have scored 77 points with 4.35 to go. So the offense has not been a problem for Temple this evening. Karstarfin and Woods, Kilgore. Spears on the baseline. In and out with Karstarfin. Gets it back. And loses it. Dougie Overton's got it. They want to run. Five on three. Overton will have a five-footer. Real nice ball handling by Doug Overton. He's been struggling all night. And here's the full court pressure by LaSalle. Hurd lays down. Doesn't get a whistle. So it's a three on two. Karstarfin looks to score. And does. Most times Temple break the press and reset the offense right there because Starthin made LaSalle pay for the full court pressure. Dougie spins left, takes it to Hodge. And a foul called on Jack Hurd. John Cheney wants an intentional foul or a flagrant foul. Look at how wide those eyes become on John Cheney. Well, John's trying everything he can. I don't blame him. It's not an intentional foul. No way. As, uh, as Hurd's going for it, Mark Macon does a real nice job getting his body there, goes for the ball, and Hurd just hugs Macon, and they just go down the other end, and now you see John Chaney getting into it. He's trying to get every he's coaching the players, and he's working the officials. Victor Karstarfin has made so much difference now, as he's fully running the show, has 15 points. There's Speedy. Down 13, looking for a miracle at the 349 mark. President, another three. Oh, this one was a three. The other was a two, so that's five quick Broderick President points. He is not noted for that shot as Broderick President. But LaSalle take them any way they can get them right now. Down 10 with 327. Only two three-pointers all year now. That's the second. Macon looks over the coach who wants a timeout. With 318 remaining, John Cheney takes another timeout. Up by 10. As at this point of the game, John Cheney breaks it down to the number of possessions he needs. And the number of points, obviously, up by 10. He doesn't want to waste the possession. Well, LaSalle has 19 fouls, which is a problem because if they foul again, it's the 10th foul new rule this year. Temple will go to the line on every foul, get two shots. Temple, on the other hand, wants to control the basketball, run down the 45-second clock, run down the game clock. But the one thing that's glaring in their statistics is they're not shooting the ball from the free throw line, 68% on the year. So um, maybe LaSalle will take the opportunity of fouling, trying to send them to the line if they have to. But this new rule really helps Temple at this particular game because every time they go to the line, they will have two shots, 
no more one and one Well, Eddie, it's not that often with a Temple team you see five players in double figures. Macon has 23, Karstarfin 15, 11 for Kilgore, 15 for Strickland, and 10 for Spears. And John Cheney always preaches that word balance. He's getting it tonight. Yeah, and he hasn't gotten it over the years. That's been part of the problem. Mark Macon has taken too much on his shoulders. And tonight, with Donald Hodge not having the game he would like to have, the other guys have stepped up and done a nice job. LaSalle needs a key defensive stop right here. And to get you caught back up, there's the reset. The possession arrow favors Temple. They are not yet over the limit. And each team down to its final timeout. Kilgore needs some help. Five second violation. Not good cuts. Kilgore's holding the basketball. Vic Karstarthen did not make a good cut. He couldn't even go in backcourt. Did not make the good cut. LaSalle's basketball. President's got another three. Oh, the senior transfer from Harden Simmons with eight quick points brings his club back within seven. A nice set shot that Ryder Craig is throwing down right now. Karstarthen with Woods. Woods wants a piece of him. Great quick feet. There's another couple of sets of quick feet. Macon head and shoulders to the baseline. Forces it wild. Got it in the foul. And Overton can't believe it. Mark Macon, a beautiful baseline runner. It was a nice move. I didn't see the foul, really. I thought it was very good defense. This is the matchup we've been talking about. Two All-Americans going at each other. That's real good defense, and that's just a better offensive move. Really, no foul on the play. Mark Macon. And Macon can put the lead back at 10. He's got 25. And James Spears returns, replacing Donald Hodge. That's an interesting uh, move by John Cheney to take Donald Hodge out of the lineup. But Hodge has been quiet, as you said, Eddie. Really never into the flow from those two early fouls. He's their best free throw shooter, Donald Hodge. 76% early in the season. Macon for the bottom end. He's got 26 now. Well, he's doing it for a man. He's playing man-to-man -man defense. He's got Spears, who's a lot quicker than Donald Hodge to play the man-to-man. -man. Woods for three. No, but Levers is there. Over to the cut, Woods. Might have walked, but he gets a layup. And it's Mick Kilgore breaking pressure. No double team. And Car Starfield. Here comes Randy Woods sneaking up on him. Good crossover, Karstarfin. Backs it into the corner. Bad pass, though. Spears comes away with it, and he knocks it in. And winds up on the dirt. And he was tackled by Milko Levers to no foul. Second shot. And he got tackled his right. They're like the referees are calling it not real tight right now. Overton trying to break down Macon. Heard with a hand in his face will get three free throws. That drives coaches crazy. John Cheney's just smiling now because he can't understand his team anyway all year. They're playing very well tonight. But right here, Mick Kilgore puts his arm in there. Stand straight up. He had no chance of blocking Jackie Hurd's shot, and Jack Hurd will go to the line for three. Looked like Hurd might have uh, hurt his back a little bit as he fell to the to the hardwood after the Kilgore foul. Makes the first. And this is the third time the Explorers have gone to the line with three free throws. You, you know, the whole thing is don't foul the jump shooter. You really don't want to foul him when he's shooting three. But again, in their defense, Temple wants to come out because they know LaSalle's going to shoot that long shot. Now, Hurd has got to make this one not only to get the deficit down, but to set up the full court pressure. And he misses, but an offensive rebound for Randy Woods. Broderick Presidents on the floor with Kilgore four hands. The arrow favors LaSalle. John Cheney's pointing the other way. And Speedy calling the offense. Down by eight with the basketball, as close as they've been since the midway stages of half number two with 147 remaining. Inbounded to the Levers. Screen for Hurd. Overton pops off and out. Reset it. And Mick Kilgore and Milko Levers. 
but they called a foul on Strickland. It looked like Kilgore knocked yeah. Levers into Strickland. You know, you want to be aggressive, but Nick Kilgore is showing too much, uh, uh, too obvious of his fouls right there. He could have been called for a push and an uh, intentional foul right there. They got Mark Strickland on the outside. You want to play aggressive, but you don't want to get caught wide open in the open floor like that. And that's four for Strickland. And it will send Levers to the line, and they're getting points without the clock moving. If Levers can knock it down, that's one and one, because that is 17 fouls on the Temple out. Big shot, Milko. He's got 10. This to trim the lead to six. Donald Hodge with the scorer's table. He'll only come in if it's a made shot, obviously. It is. Hodge is in. Spears is out. 86-80. Car stopping in a bad spot. Gets out of the trap. And now it's man-to-man -man head up with Dougie Overton. As they will look to run some clock. Double high post stack. Bacon's got screens on either side of the foul line. Watch for number 12 to pop off Donald Hodge. There he comes. And Randy Woods has him this trip. And Speedy's saying deny him one way. Mark pushes back out. Shot clock's at 17. Game clock's at 112. Car starting with Overton. Hodge wants the basketball. Kilgore at half court with five on the shot clock. Woods fouls him and fails them out. Shot clock goes down the five. And Speedy gets right in the right ear of Randy Woods. Randy Woods is trying to be aggressive there, but he came out with a bad angle to foul him. He'll go for the basketball, but he comes out real hard right there, gets the arm in there. Give Mick Kilgore a lot of credit to protect the basketball deep in the game here. And LaSalle has passed 10 team fouls. This is automatic two for Mick Kilgore. Has one. Now with 12. John Chaney pulling Macon and Strickland off the foul line to set up the defensive end. Short. The lead is seven. We're into single digits. Overton. Takes it to the foul line. Got a 14-footer, calls a timeout. At 87-82. With 52.6. And by our stats, that's the final LaSalle timeout. They're going to need another one. Here's uh, Dougie taking it on his own. They got it awfully quickly. He didn't need the three. Got into the two-point range. Good balance there and knocks it in and gets it down to five points as he goes right by the Temple defense. Now LaSalle can set up their, their full court pressure. They're going to have to foul right away. Let's listen to Speedy Mars. Sometimes you have five players and three voices yelling at them all at once, yeah. you know. I love when Rolly gets the little guys out on his board and moves them all around. And I don't know who's who anymore, but we've been very fortunate, obviously, in the Big Five having terrific coaches. And they've gone on to the NBA, and I, I mean, you have two real good coaches tonight in John Chaney and Speedy Morris. And four hands would mean dual possession belongs to See, the Hodge is the guy. If they're in trouble, they got to throw it high to Hodge. 45 seconds right now as Mark Macon crosses the timeline. And he can stand out there and run clock, but uh, he'll get a nine-footer instead. Misses! Levers the board. Heard on the run. As Woods two-on-one with President. Woods for three. Short. Milko hustling. And loses it. 
I don't know what Mark Macon was thinking there. He has to have his mind into the game right there. He has a five-point advantage. That shot was, I mean, I don't know what he's thinking. He's got to know better than to take that shot. And Randy Woods had an open three-pointer to get his club to within two. Overton's got to go. Around highs to the lane. Finger rolls. No. And a foul by Randy Woods on Victor Karstarkin. Might have gotten a piece of his face as Victor tries to walk it off. And that was it. That was the shot. Doug Overton had to make that. They could have used the two, obviously. It would get him to a three-point game. He had the layup, just couldn't get it down. A lot of people would say, should you kiss it off the glass? He had the wide open. Look at that. Kilgore showed himself for Temple, but just couldn't get a big rebound by Vic Starfin. Victor making the key free throws down the stretch. He's got 16 tonight. And he's played a great floor game. And you have to play a great floor game for Temple to win tonight because Randy Woods was covering him all night long. Has two. 20 seconds left. The lead is seven. Now you just don't want to foul the three-point shooter. You know Randy's going to take it. Air ball levers laid up and good. Out of timeout. And they'll foul Karstarfin with 10 seconds remaining. That should be the limit for Randy Woods. By our count, he's got five fouls and 27 points. Well, we talked about the backcourt duo of LaSalle, Overton, and Woods. Woods had a big game tonight. Doug Overton really struggled the whole ball game. All right, officially Randy with four, so he's still on the floor. And Victor gets the lead back up to six. This is a strange Temple team. We saw them phenomenal against Villanova out of DuPont. They couldn't be any worse at McGonagall against Penn, and tonight they played an outstanding ball game. I wonder if it's going to be like this all year long for John Cheney and his coaching staff. Final seconds, Overton knocks it down, but they can't stop the clock. And this one is history. And LaSalle has been denied its 1,000 victory. Temple has claimed the share of the Big Five City Series championship. And John meets Speedy at half court. We'll come back, wrap it up from the Civic Center in a moment. This was a horrible crime. A tragedy for those involved. In order to prevent another tragedy, you need only decide whether the right man stands accused of the crime. Sometimes the innocent are punished. He needs to be a good prosecutor. So now I'm a good defender. I just switched teams. This time, the guilty was set free. A woman was raped and butchered, remember? And I'm not even sure which came first. Free. <laughs> to kill again. I want to retain you. I think I'm about to continue my education in criminal law. He did it. He did it last year, last week, last night. And he will do it again soon if he is to stop. I have an alibi. They're not going to find any evidence. No one knows when. The number one suspect is a man you put back on the street. But Ben Chase knows where. Don't disappoint me, Ben. We really are partners now. In the rain. Someday you'll know all my secrets. I'm going to use your phone! I wonder if we'll still be friends. You have to do the best for your client. I had that animal locked up. And I let him out to kill again. Criminal law. And welcome back as they begin the crowd of 8,000 or so files out of the Philadelphia Civic Center. Welcome back, everybody, to our post-game report. Larry Rosen and Ed Stefanski. The Temple Owls have now claimed a share of the Big Five City Series title with a 91-86 victory over Speedy Morris and the LaSalle Explorers. And Temple puts five players in double figures, gets that balance. What an enigmatic team John Chaney's got. Yeah, well, they did a real nice job, especially with Donald Hodge getting an early foul trouble, getting out of the game. James Spears coming off the bench just did a magnificent job with Strickland. I mean, both kids really stepped up and did the job. We saw some big plays. LaSalle just really didn't shoot the ball well and shot it quickly. 
Yeah, indeed. And Mark Macon, of course, uh, came into his own with 26 points, although had a lot of help from some other people. You don't notice Mark quite as much. But Mark, uh, down the stretch, took the big shots when he had to to get Temple this victory. Here's here's the big highlight of the game. And it's a great matchup, Overton Macon. Watch Macon break him down, take it. Overton does a good job, takes away baseline straight up. Gets the basket and gets the foul. I mean, that was a big play. Two good players. Overton not happy with the foul, but Macon got the two points, which counted. Mark even uh, pumped the right fist a little bit. A little emotion from Mark. Doug Overton, the All-American senior guard from Dobbins High School, very fired up for this one, but unofficially wound up 4 out of 22 in his matchup with Mark Macon. Yeah, I think both of them, obviously, when you have two players of this caliber, they know it coming out of the game. Uh, Macon had the best of Doug Overton tonight, and I'm sure there'll be many more matchups over the years in the NBA, these two kids going after each other. Randy Woods led all scores. He had 27, and LaSalle loses to Temple by a final score of 91 to 86. John Chaney says he coaches his team to prepare for March, no matter who they're playing, and they played like they were thinking about March today. We'd like to thank everybody that helped bring you Big Five Basketball on Prison tonight. Bob Ayers, Daryl Aguilla in the truck, along with producer John Slobotkin, Bob Windheim on statistics for Ed Stefanski. I'm Larry Rose. We'll see you again soon for more Big Five Basketball on Prism. The final once again, Temple 91, LaSalle 86. They win at least a share of the Big Five City Series title. Good night, everybody. Your channel for total family entertainment. The following film has been rated PG-13. Parents are strongly cautioned. Some material may be inappropriate.